Hi there! Here is the newly launched Zebronix Zebjuke Bar 8700 Pro. So it comes with a wireless subwoofer, which technically you can place anywhere in the room and doesn't need to be attached to the soundbar. For just 8999 it offers a super impressive experience. We've actually already set it up and have been using it for a couple of days. I'll share all the details, including a sound demo, so you can decide you should buy the Zeb Jukebar 8700 Pro or not. Let's begin. Starting with the unboxing, so here's the retail packaging. You can spot the Dolby Audio logo. Then on the back, mentioned are the specs, 160 watts RMS sound output, the dimensions and the weight of the subwoofer and soundbar. Then on the top are some features, multi-connectivity, 13.3 cm subwoofer and at the bottom are the manufacturing details with the MRP of 17,999. Alright, let's open it up. So inside the box is the wireless subwoofer, then we have the soundbar here, then we have two power adapters, one for the soundbar and one for the subwoofer. Then we have an AV cable, this is for TVs that don't have an HDMI port, two wall mount brackets, screws for the wall mount. Then there's a card which comes with a QR code. You can scan this using your mobile phone and access the full user manual on it. Best part, it's easily accessible anytime you want right on your fingertips. So convenient. Two AAA batteries for the remote. And finally, the remote. Now we've seen this remote previously with other Zebronic soundbars, really nice and compact. Right on the top is the power button, the Bluetooth pairing button. You can control the volume from here, D-pad to navigate. Then there are presets for music, for news, for movie. There's 3D. Then you can control the treble from here. You can increase, decrease the bass from here. Really nice and easy to use. So, no HDMI cable is provided in the box, which means you'll have to buy that separately to connect to the TV if you want the Dolby audio experience. I link a few HDMI cables in the description. If you'd like to buy one, you should check them out. Now, in case you have an older TV that lacks an HDMI port, you can use the provided AV cable adapter for audio output to the soundbar. Now, ideally, the soundbar should be placed below the TV on a table like we have here, or it can be wall mounted as well. The subwoofer can be placed anywhere in the room since it's wireless. Ideally, keeping it in the corner will enhance the bass. Though for this demo, we have placed it right next to the TV. Now, when I say it's a wireless subwoofer, it means there are no wires between the subwoofer and soundbar as it connects via Bluetooth. But it will need a power source to work. So keep that in mind. Let's have a look at the soundbar first. It's mostly made of plastic and the build quality is very impressive. The front grille is metal and curves towards the top. The length of the soundbar is 30 inches and this will help you to know the space you might need. You can spot the Zebronix branding on the left while Dolby Audio logo on the right. The top section is glossy and is a fingerprint magnet, but then you would never be touching this area for any reason, so looks shiny and cool. All the buttons are on the side of the soundbar, there's a power button, there's an input toggle button and the volume up and down button. I only wish this was backlit because it might be hard to see in the dark. On the front are two drivers, one on each side for better sound and audio separation. Then there's also an LED indicator in the center. It provides info on the input source, volume and more. On the back, right in the center are all the ports, starting with the power input port. Then there's a USB port, an HDMI ARC port and AUX input. Now, something to keep in mind, the USB port isn't for playing music, but just for updates. Not something you should be messing with. Coming to the subwoofer. So it's sleek, slim and very well built. It houses a 5.5 inch driver and you can spot the mesh fabric covering the speaker on the side. Zebronix logo right in the center. Then towards the back on the top is the bass reflex cone. At the bottom is the power input, a USB port also for updates and a pairing button. The soundbar has an output of 70 watts while the subwoofer has an output of 90 watts in combined totally giving you an output of 160 watts RMS. So it's suitable for someone with a 32 inch TV to even someone who has like a 65 or 55 inch TV, which I'm using right now. All right, enough info, time for a demo. And the first demo will be music playing via Bluetooth. So as 
you heard, it actually sounds amazing. The clarity is impressive, the vocals are clear, and the bass is deep enough to make the overall experience very rich. It also gets loud enough to fill a big size room like this, so it's perfect for even house parties. Now for the real test. Let's see how the audio sounds when the soundbar is connected via HDMI arc to the TV. Alright, so it sounds really amazing, especially if you consider this soundbar is priced under 9000. Also you can experiment by keeping the wireless subwoofer in different places in the room. The overall sound experience is loud, it's bassy and it really elevates your movie watching experience. It's a simple and clean setup for anyone who doesn't want too many wires running around. The Zep Jukebar 8700 Pro is already on sale on Amazon for 8999. I'll share the links below in the description. If you'd like to buy one, you should definitely check this one out. So I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.